So we're gonna compare the parts. Here's the old one, here's the new one. Right on, I mean, look at the difference. You could see right in there. On this one, yeah, good luck. So let's get to it. Welcome back guys to Steven's DIY Auto Repair. We're back here with this 09 Mitsubishi Lancer. And we finally got the new part in. So here's the new EGR valve. So today we're gonna be installing this in and getting it put back together and seeing if she runs. So we're gonna compare the parts. Here's the old one, here's the new one. Right on, I mean, look at the difference. You could see right in there. On this one, yeah, good luck. So, let's get to it. Okay guys, so a brief overview of why we went ahead and condemned this old EGR valve. Is, so the customer's complaint was um, the vehicle would not accelerate, it was idling poorly, it was a um, lack of performance. So we pulled some codes off and the relevant code that would give the customer any kind of complaint like that was the EGR valve code that we pulled. So my method, I went directly toward that. Um, we pulled it off and we did, we conducted two tests according to the service information. So the first test was checking the resistance of the coils in the stepper motor up here. So this is an electronically controlled EGR valve. Some are vacuum controlled. This one's electronically controlled. So basically this up here is like, a, it's a stepper motor. So basically the PCM or the power, power train control module, the PCM will tell this stepper motor to open and close the valve and how far to open or how far to close the valve inside. So the first test, we tested the coils uh, the resistance and it was good but so the second test that we did was we actually hooked cer um, certain pins to battery positive and negative and connected these per service information and what we were supposed to get was a shutter so it was supposed to kind of kind of vibrate a little bit basically and you were supposed to be able to hear this motor kick on. So we didn't hear a motor kick on. We conducted that test twice and both times it failed. So that gave me good indication that the motor is not even working, which is gonna prevent the valve from opening, thus giving us the code of insufficient flow. So we made the call on this EGR valve. So now let's go ahead, let's clean we clean the throttle body up pretty well from what it was and then I don't know if you guys can see down here Let's see we're, we're in the process of cleaning up those ports right now where the EGR valve attaches to so we're gonna go ahead and get this show on the road customer wants his car back so let's get to it okay guys so we used an assortment of pipe cleaners this um, it's like sink drain here and some cotton swabs in order to clean out the ports for where the EGR valve attaches to because there was a lot of carbon buildup and that was I'm assuming part of the cause of why our EGR valve failed so we're gonna go ahead and start putting all this back together. So we'll bring you guys right back. Okay guys, so we got our new EGR valve bolted back on to 15, torque to spec to 15 foot pounds. So let's keep putting this baby back together. 
All right, guys, so we got everything put back together. We got everything installed back together. Um, so we went ahead and cleaned the battery up, cleaned the terminals because they were pretty corroded. Um, so we had this vehicle for quite a while, almost a week. We've done a lot of work on it. We've done front and rear brakes and rotors. We've done rear shocks. Um, so you'll probably see those videos already before you see this one. So the reason why I mentioned that is because we finally got it back together to do a test drive. So because we were messing with the brakes, we want to top off our brake fluid if we need to. And in order to get to the EGR valve, we had to take some radiator hoses off and lost coolant. So you want to make sure that your coolant level is, is good. So we went ahead, topped these off. Now we're going to go ahead and take it for an extensive test drive. Make sure brakes are working really. We're gonna make sure the brakes are working well. Make sure the shocks are working well in the rear, and make sure we don't have our main customer complaint, which would be the no acceleration, no engine power. So make sure you guys top off your fluids. Uh, make sure you pump your brakes before you ever go on for that test drive, and make sure it's safe to do so. So. We've already pretty much did all that, so now we're gonna go ahead and take it for a ride. So we'll bring you guys right back. And we're back, guys. So we did about just under 20 miles, about 30 minutes, 45 minutes of driving. Um, everything seems well. We bedded in the brakes, the new brake pads and new rotors. Um, and we have no drivability issues. We have no acceleration issues, no engine power loss issues. So I would say that's a fix. So we made the right call on the EGR valve. Um, that, <clears throat> that's why it's important guys for you to test instead of guessing. So there you have it. So we came back, we topped off all the fluids again to make sure that all the fluids are topped off before you hand it over. Um, we put just a tad bit of um, brake fluid in to top it off to max. And yeah, guys, there you guys have it. So that is how you test and replace a bad EGR valve or electrical EGR valve. Electrically controlled EGR valve. All right, guys. As always, I hope you guys liked this video. If you guys did, make sure to hit that like button. If you guys would like to be notified when I put out another video, please hit that bell notification. And always, guys, subscribe to my channel for more informational videos and DIY projects. And as always, guys, until next time, have a good one.